Everyone would just like to make their way back to shore. Tonight, Bondi makes world news. A shark has attacked a swimmer at Sydney's world-famous Bondi Beach. Was this the first man to be attacked by a shark at Bondi since 1929? No way he got bit by a shark. Well, it's not a dog. There's no tigers around. <laughs> and was this the culprit? As the sun and surf weave their magic, the cares of the world wash away. Bondi's spell is cast. But nothing breaks the spell quicker than this sound. Lifeguard Ben Sutherland was training at lunchtime when he spotted a large shape moving towards him. Something looked a little odd and I couldn't really make it out and so I looked at it for a little while and all of a sudden I realised it was a fin. And I looked at it for a little while and made sure it wasn't sort of porpoising like a dolphin or anything. It was, um, it was definitely cutting through, the, cutting through the water. Bondi's shark net only provides a deterrence. Shark sightings are still common. I probably looked at it for 20 seconds before. I was like, that's definitely a shark. If everyone would just like to make their way back to shore. Lifeguards waste no time investigating. It's basically right where the middle of the flags are, so it's a pretty, pretty bad spot if we're going to have a shark over there. Go back in. Get out of the water. There's been a shark sighting around here. Go and get out of the water, please. I've never seen a big shark. I know, I've heard stories. Of, they are out there for sure. I mean, any fisherman will tell you. I've thought I've seen them and haven't seen them, and then I thought I haven't seen them, they've been there. So, I mean, we've had a lot of, you know, hoaxes over the years. Even saying that, even when we get the calls from the general public, we, we don't just brush them aside, we still check them out, and because the one time that you don't do that, that there will be one and something will happen, so... Bobby's been the resident expert when it comes to investigating shark sightings. Mate, you're 100% sure, eh? Yeah, I thought it was just a dolphin, but then I, like, turned at me and I saw its teeth. The old salt relies on telltale signs. <laughs> the first thing that goes if there's a shark in the area are the seagulls. Yeah. They were just sitting there. I think it's a bit shaky. The seagulls mightn't have seen it, mate. Yeah. Seagulls are the first things to go, mate, if there's a shark in the area. First thing, they like, just lift off. With no further sightings, the beach is declared safe. But Bobby's seagull theory isn't garnering much support. Is there many fish out there, No, nah, there's not even many seagulls. We went out the back to have a look at the seagulls. There's nothing that going on. That means there could have been one. <laughs> they must have already lifted, hey, Bobby? They must have, they must have already, already lifted. They're already gone. Oh, seagulls have lifted. <laughs> Bondi's spell returns. But not for long. A few days later, a man stumbles up to the tower. He tells lifeguards he's been attacked by a shark. Uh, half past eight last night, uh, in the water, attacked by a gummy shark, punched it in the nose to get it off me, fought it with it a bit, then uh, after that, yeah, pretty much it. Mate, there was no one else around, eh? Mate, uh, you've, done, you've done well, I'll tell you what, because there's some nasty... It'll take a pain out. After the bite last night, I um, laid down and I was unconscious, so I fell asleep and woke up this morning with a lot of blood on my arm, so went back in the water again this morning to clean it with the salt water. Yeah. 34 year old Scott and girlfriend Kelly only recently arrived from Tasmania. Paramedics attend one very lucky man. Put this in your mouth. All right, you can start sucking through that. He's passed out on the rocks down there last night and we've only just found him now. So he's been there for 14, 16 hours. How much did you have to drink last night? Three cans, that's it. Is there any reason why you, you think that you may have been passed out on the rocks for so long? Yeah, because of the bite and being unconscious. I went unconscious. But for 14 hours is a really, 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 really long. What time did you go swimming last night? Half yeah, past eight. Then after, PM. Then after that, I woke up about 10. Woke up about 10, 10.30 this morning. Blood all over my arm. So you went for a swim at 8.30 PM last night, and you woke up on the rocks at 10 o'clock this morning. Yep. And you'd only had three cans of beer last night? Yep. Right. What's your medical history, Scott? 
Good. Do you have any medical problems? Do you take any medication? Do you see a doctor for any reason whatsoever? Uh, just antidepressants, that's all. Antidepressants. Yeah. All right. And the only injury from the uh, shark is here on your arm. You weren't bitten anywhere else. Don't have any pain anywhere else? No, but I just thought, no, when this starts working. The strong pain could indicate Scott also has a fracture. Deep breath, mate. Suck it in. Mate, I've got to put the bandage on it. Yeah, exactly. right. If you keep sucking on that whistle, the pain will go away. Trust me, it's not going to go away. I've had three pain for it. And I when did you have away. those? And where did you have those? Did you have those on the rocks with you? No, I had them this morning at 6 no, o'clock when I woke up. Okay, okay. so you didn't right. sleep on the rocks. Yeah. You've obviously been home somewhere no, if you've I didn't taken... sleep on the rocks. Right. Yeah. That's the story you've given us. No, 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 no. You know where the cave is. Yeah. You can yeah. ask the other guys. Yeah. yeah. So, so you slept in the cave? Yeah. What we can do is we can run you up to the hospital because you need to get those cleaned up a bit and... Uh... What about the pain? That's what you've got the green whistle for. That's well, pain relief. You just saying doing nothing. Oh, well, we don't have anything stronger, unfortunately. You have to wait till you get to the hospital. OK? How did you get up to the lifeguard tower? Away? Hey, Mum. How are you? It's me again. Got bit by a shark. Bondi. It's obviously doing something to you. <laughs> all, right. all right, Scott. We're going to help you up, Sam. We're going to get you to the ambo, all right? Wait till I'm for your sis. As Scott is taken to hospital, He's about to get his 15 minutes of fame. No one's been attacked by a shark at Bondi for nearly 80 years. That's a shark. Not a big one, because he wouldn't have had his arm left and he, there wouldn't have been anything that he probably would have taken him. Oh, they're proper, yeah, they're proper bite marks, mate. Like there's, you know. To me, I'm, I could be wrong, I'm not infallible, but that looked like teeth to me. Bobby and H are convinced by Scott's story. Chapo? He's not quite so sure. He wrestled it off, fought it off, and came back to shore and passed out. Yeah, it's a good story. Yeah, well, it's not a dog. There's no tigers around. It's been so long down here since there's been a shark attack, so, you know, there's going to be sceptics. If we tell, you know, I'll go down and tell Azza now or Reedy, and they'll say, nah, mate, no way he got bit by a shark. But listening to Yordwin and Harry, you know, they're kind did of... Did you see the marks? I did see the marks, but... Well, um, what would you think it was, yeah? Well... You know, who knows? I look, just massive gouges in his arm. You know, it could have easily been a shark attack. I've got to admit, I've, I haven't seen too many shark attacks in my time. But you've seen pictures in books, Bobby, of people you know, that have been savaged by a shark. Well, I want to know, so, but if anyone was here last night, if the seagulls lifted, <laughs> right, there's a chance it was a proper shark, all right? <laughs> if the seagulls jumped out of the water, there's a shark for sure. <laughs> this is my 11th season. I've been waiting because you know, the amount of open ocean swimming and the amount of people that now swim in the ocean with a lot of disdain for the uh, for sharks, it's going to wake a lot of people up and make them realise it's a, it is a reality. At St Vincent's emergency, Scott is being treated after reporting he was attacked by a shark at Bondi Beach. But we're just going to see how far down, you know, obviously sharks' teeth you know, are quite long and they can penetrate quite deep down, so we've got to make sure that hasn't gone down into the uh, elbow the, joint. That's the most... The, most yeah, the one above the joint's the worst one. Yeah. Like I said, there's pain running up my yeah. arm. Are you allergic to anything? Yeah, sharks. Think of coming up last night? It was all a big shot. Yeah, and I ran it out of that water shot. so okay. far. Yeah. And then I just collapsed oh, okay. and went... To sleep. Anyway, you're here now, which is the main thing. While shock may have clouded Scott's memory, Kelly has more precise recollections. I knew that he went for a swim. He said to me, I'm going for a swim, babe. And I said, OK, that's OK, you go for a swim, but be careful. And then next thing I fell asleep because I, I'm a very tired person. I love my sleep and everything like every girl does. And next thing he comes to bed and sleeps. And, um, yeah, he didn't say a word. He just collapse on the bed, you know, and thinking, babe, move over. And he didn't make a word out of his mouth or anything. And I woke up this morning and I saw blood all up his arm, down his, all over his shorts and everything, and all over me. It was like being cut through with a knife, but with a serrated knife. And just bites going chunk, chunk. But I just kept on hitting him and hitting him in that nose as much as kid, because it's so hard to hit through water. And I just couldn't get that big enough punches into his nose. 
The orthopaedic surgeons have come down and the wound that we saw on the elbow, it does need to go to theatre and the others need to be washed as well and then sutured. And the best way to do that is in theatre under a general anaesthetic. We've assessed nerve damage and he's got normal sensation. He's been very lucky. Back at Bondi, Chapo and Maxi try to piece together details of Scott's extraordinary story. Maxi, we'll go and see if there's any blood. Maybe find out a little bit more about this story. Backpackers and homeless people sometimes bunk down in the caves at South Bondi. We're just kind of collecting all these guys' belongings because, you know, even though it's not March, it might mean a lot to him, so... As for evidence of the shark attack, there's little to be found. There doesn't seem to be anything else up here, right? Like, there's no blood or anything that I can see, so... Meanwhile, before surgery, Scott retells the story everyone wants to hear. Kelly went to sleep in the sleeping bag and I went for a dip and got attacked by a shark. I'm not blaming the shark, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it probably so, would have been about... Scott's recollections are becoming more detailed. It probably would have been about, as I said, about, about that big. You would have been. I was looking at him, all right. Bloody hell, I was looking at him. Before heading into the operating theatre, Scott gets an anxious call from his dad. Yeah, I won the fight. I'm, I'm just glad to be here, that's all. Yeah, M much more things can't go wrong in my life. Yeah, so I'm going up to surgery in about half an hour. Yeah, and I'm on the news at 6 o'clock down there. All right, love you, Dad. It's OK, bye. Word has spread to his family. Yeah, now it's about to spread across the country. Bondi Beach. A short time ago, he described how he thought he was going to die. Shark attacked me, um, grabbed hold of my arm, wouldn't let go. So I ended up punching him in the nose and trying to fight him off. I can't understand how that shark got through that net or it's just, yeah, it's just a big shock and I'm glad to still be here for my kids and, yeah, just happy. It's the first one in 70 years. As Scott wheels into surgery, his story beams around the world. A shark has attacked a swimmer at Sydney's world-famous Bondi Beach. It's the first such attack in 70 years. He managed to break free and escape after punching the shark on the nose. The next morning, beachgoers disregard the possible danger. Swimmers frolic in the exact spot where the attack reportedly took place. A little later, Bondi's international celebrity makes an emotional return to show off his 38 stitches. Hey, how are you, mate? The story's spot on. Spot on, yeah. Couldn't get much more spot on. Bloody spot on. Don't cry. Well, true, but scary and it's upsetting and... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just grateful that I'm still here. It's only a small one. Didn't look small yesterday. It's had a couple of goes at you. Yeah. Do you remember it like whack, whack? Three times. Yeah, three it's, times. But it's, like, it's come from an angle. Yeah. Amazing, it's actually. It's probably a wobbling on because there's no bottom jaw. Yes, it's, only been, it's only been bitten from the top. Yeah. So that's, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot. Because if it had been a proper Noah, you would have had the bottom teeth as well. Yeah. And you wouldn't be here, mate. You would have bled yeah. to death. Real glad I come out better. Yeah, gorgeous. It's yeah. like having a fight with Mike Tyson, but I never got the ear chewed off. Curious about exactly what happened, H takes Scott and Kelly back to the scene of the attack. I decided to go for a swim just out here. Okay. Um, just past that little um, cave bit there and just out past the rocks. Oh, there. just in the storm where the storm water runs out. Yeah, yeah I got just it. see. This next minute, all I know is I got grabbed from the arm. Yeah. Don't know what it was, turned around. Could see a bit of grey, but not much because it's a bit dark. Yeah. And just uh, started to hit him on the nose. Ah. and just started to punch him on the nose and kept punching him on the nose. Smart thing to do. And then he kept on, um, he let go for a couple of seconds, then he come back again, he come back for more. And then I thought, oh, I'm not gonna make it out of the water here. I'm, I'm gonna die here. This is it, I've, I've lost everything. 
Uh, blood coming out everywhere. Yeah. Blood everywhere, all over me, mm -hmm. all over my shorts. I had to throw them all away. And then Kelly, the next morning, found me in a big pool of blood. Hey, Kelly. And that's where, it, yeah. That's where I thought I was going. I was dead. I thought I was dead. The details remain a little confused. Never having dealt with a shark attack, lifeguards can't fall back on experience. Grab on, wouldn't it? When I spoke to him, he genuinely believed that he'd been attacked by a shark. <laughs> or, 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 he's a tremendous con artist, one of the greats of all time. I can't understand if you fought off a shark, you'd have that much adrenaline in your body. The experience I liken it to was when I was running with the bulls in Pampelona, and it's you know, you, it's a near-death experience. You could die from the bulls, and, and you're not going to sleep afterwards. You, your heart rate and your adrenaline is passing. As Scott recuperates in a local backpackers hostel, three days of scrutiny follow. But as faith in Scott's story seems to be dwindling, Tom and Brooke make a dramatic discovery in Bondi's shark net. Yeah, go ahead, jet ski. Mate, we've got a massive shark in the net out here. Take me back to the, the sweet times, the hot nights. Everything is going to be all right in the summertime. Baby, in the summertime, <laughs> that is where I'll be. Just 200 metres off Bondi Beach, Tom and Brooke have made a gruesome discovery in the shark net. Central to Tom, um, is the shark alive? Visibility is pretty poor, but we'll get back to you in just a sec. Just as soon as Brooke dives down and has a look, just get clear. Yeah, copy that. Tell um, tell Brookie to be careful. We wouldn't want to lose her. I would go in with you, but I'm driving the ski. Yeah, right. So I'll just look out for you up here. Brave girl, man. Brave girl. The two and a half metre shark has only been in the net a day or two. Was it the same shark that attacked Scott? What, what sort of shark attack is this? Um, I think it's a great nurse. Yeah? Yep. Why is that just because of the teeth and stuff? Um, yeah. I can't believe how close it is to the shoreline. Like, we're 200 metres offshore and there's a three to four metre beast like that. People, people swim out here every day. Later that day, the shark boat arrives to clear the net. Yeah, it's probably about eight to ten feet. The shark is an endangered grey nurse. Generally considered harmless, they have bitten divers when provoked. Did the grey nurse bite Scott, or was it a gummy shark as he claims? Some lifeguards are blaming a common but sometimes aggressive wobby gong. The man bit. Massive. It was a wobby gong. It's called a wobby gong. There you go, about that big. And bit the man on the arm. As the debate continues, Tom receives an anonymous phone call. A woman claims she knows the truth. Saying that she knew the guy who got like, attacked by a shark and he's currently in police custody and that he was a known criminal and that he was caught, you know, breaking and entering. Just because he is an alleged criminal. thief or an alleged criminal doesn't mean that he hasn't been attacked by a shark. I mean... But the anonymous informer also claims Scott's injury happened days before the alleged attack. Scott's story is getting murkier by the minute. Lifeguards call in shark expert Dennis Reed to put the case to rest. It, it could be a shark bite. I wouldn't be 100% sure. Now, what I generally like to do in this case is look at the underside as well. OK. And if it's only on one side of the arm, yeah. then uh, it's a little bit... Um, well, well, it is only on one side of the arm. Yeah, Every species of shark that you're aware of has teeth on the bottom. Yep, yep, yep. And, and, and they're usually the thing that grabs first. So the typical behaviour of most of the right. sharks is to, to grab, grab something with the lower teeth uh -huh. and then either saw or... Uh, bite into so it with the top. There was so nothing underneath yeah. here. Yep. It was only on top. We were under the presumption that wobby gongs had no bottom teeth, so right, that's why okay, we yeah. thought yeah. Yeah. it was a wobby yeah. gong. But yeah. clearly, you've just um, proven us all wrong. 
So is this the joy of a wobby gong? That's a wobby gong, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's about a 1.4 metre wobby gong. Yep. Can, can you tell me roughly the uh, the width of those? The, the, You're uh, looking at, I'd say, three oh. quarters of an inch. Oh, look, there's no there's no shark that I know that it, that it have a, that wider wider scrape. I'm not but, sure uh, if you've heard today. Um, he's been arrested, this really? gentleman, for break and enter. If I had two possibilities, one glass window yeah. and, and, and two possible shark fight, I'd say the probabilities would lie in favour of the uh, going through a glass window. Days after Scott's alleged shark attack, beachgoers flock back to Bondi. Scott's murky story, an anonymous tip-off and evidence from a shark expert have left lifeguards sceptical. Now the newspapers have smelt a rat. This has got to be one of the biggest hoaxes we've ever seen down here. Let me read it to you. Bondi's bogus bite, shark attack, just a fishy line. Shark attack never occurred and the man who made the claims has been arrested for theft, sources have told. Take well, a look at him. Although I did say only 99% I was convinced. I never was quite 100% convinced. That 1% plays a big role down here. It does now. It just means that we've taken another dimension to our job. We're private detectives now. <laughs> you know, we, we solve crimes as well as uh, rescue people. Well, you'd be Kojak then if there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's now getting more bad press than the shark. The paper alleges he actually cut his arm on a broken window. That's one hell of a con job. Mm. I and mean, he's probably having a good time now, having a good laugh, because he got away with it for a good week. What could happen tomorrow? Who's to, who's to know? Really, we, uh, it's just that uh, next time it happens, we'll be having a good look, won't we? I mean, as it turned out, he got caught by the police through his stupidity anyway, so... I guess he probably didn't realise it was no. going to go worldwide. Days later, Scott's girlfriend, Kelly, returns to the beach. It's a chance for Detective Inspector Bobby to wrap up the investigation. Oh, here she is. How are you, all right? How are you? Good, what's going on? Nothing. Why? Nothing? We sort of found out it may not have been a shark bite. Yeah. We're not really sure. Are you happy to enlighten us on anything else? What, yeah. what might have really happened? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Okay, come on, fill because, us in. Okay, um, what happened was, um, when we went to um, Hobart, yeah. um, he got bitten by, um, he didn't get bitten by nothing. He um, put his arm for a window. A window? Down bon um, in Hobart, yeah. Oh, here we go. The yeah. story thickens, eh? The That's plot right. thickens. Mm -hmm. And so why did you sort of back his story up about the shark? Because, why? Because you know, um, I, was, I was scared of him. Oh, you'll be scared of him. So that day when I said to you down here, I thought it was a bit strange that mm. you didn't run up and get help straight away, yeah. you know, and if you said he got bitten by a shark. Right. So you pretty much knew the whole time, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. He'll probably feel very guilty now. He'll probably feel, why did, he'll probably think, why did I do it for? Why couldn't I just tell him what happened? You know what I mean? They, could have, they might have just took me down there and fixed my arm up, but I just didn't have to say I got bitten by a shark. What am I going to do? I'm going to move on with my life and start my life fresh again, though. Scott later pleaded guilty to break and enter charges and car theft. He lied to us, fully lied, and, and he was good at it, you know? He had me convinced, uh, a little bit annoyed. You probably would have been about, as I said, about, about that big, if you would have been. I don't really feel cheated. I feel a bit stupid more than cheated. I was looking at him, all right. Bloody oath, I was looking at him. You always get misled down at Bondi. There's always something that... You know, you think it happened, but it usually turns out to be something else. I just kept on hitting him and hitting him in that nose. We've got to take people on face value, you know. If someone comes up and says, I've got bit by a shark, well, you know, we sort of help them first and ask questions later. I'm real glad I came out better. Yeah, God, yeah. It's like having a fight with Mike Tyson, but I never got the ear chewed off. Next week on Bondi Rescue. The girl got annihilated. She got actually pole axed. A romantic surf ends in agony. <laughs> Maxie's first girlfriend. We've been going out for two days. Kyle's last rescue. Can you go under? Matt D's missing.